What you're seeing here is a vision of the future, a combination of technologies being developed into one comprehensive package that allows for one person to design a house, store it for later recall, run the design through a simulation graphics program, test the feasibility of actually building such a design, and then build it. All from a single computer workstation without touching a log or writing a single line of computer code. Just one project of the Center for Productivity Enhancement, this is the University of Lowell's factory of the future. The Lincoln Log Factory of the Future is just one example of the center's holistic philosophy, studying the manufacturing process from the initial design and engineering of a product to its manufacture, striving to involve both industry and academia in mutually beneficial projects and partnerships. Established as a means of combining engineering education with an exploration of technological advances and a determination of how best to apply these technologies, the goals of the Factory of the Future are several to understand the laws and principles of intelligent production, to know the limits and variables of these principles, to determine the potential of artificial intelligence and expert systems, to establish specifications that allow for rapid expansion into the private sector, and to develop a software library of intelligent manufacturing tools. This project has been cited as being more advanced than any factory reported in current literature. As a research tool, it has shown that while its product is a toy and its expert systems are based in part on watching children play, it is a robust, intuitive model of what computer-integrated manufacturing can be. The factory itself is made up of three parts. An intelligent computer-aided design or CAD system, a simulator, and the physical factory. Consisting of a color monitor, a keyboard and a mouse, the CAD software displays a grid and icons of logs which the user selects and places on the grid with the mouse. Structural requirements and integrity are checked automatically by the software, dictating allowable choices for the next log placement, thereby avoiding expensive mistakes. When a house design is completed, the CAD system creates a list of the parts used in their positions, all in English. This file becomes the source for the simulator and for the physical factory. The simulator is a computerized graphic representation of the physical factory, complete with logs, robot arms, and a workspace on which the Lincoln log houses are built, even gravity. All laws of structural feasibility apply as the simulator runs through a make-believe construction of a house. Physically, the factory consists of two cooperating robot arms with a work pallet between them, parts feeders at each robot side, and video cameras. This is a machine vision-aided system, utilizing two video cameras mounted from above to oversee the work pallet, making sure that the logs have been placed correctly before allowing construction to continue. The actual construction is controlled by an expert dynamic scheduler program which directs the robots and parts feeders as they work to build the house. The parts feeders use pneumatics to advance one of the three sized logs to a place where the robot can pick it up. The scheduler determines which arm lays down which log at any given time, actually making decisions about how to build the house. In fact, it might not build the same house the same way on two separate executions. It makes its decisions on the fly. The system has a built-in error simulation process controller called Gremlin, randomly causing problems which the scheduler must then solve in real time. Here, for example, Gremlin has shut off one of the log feeders. The scheduler makes its plans accordingly and directs one robot to pass the other robot a necessary log. Here again, we physically intervene and move a log after it has been placed. Noticing that something is amiss, the scheduler then redirects the robot arm back and it repositions the log. Note that the elements of the factory are simple, with low-tech components, and that the system software has to compensate for their inadequacies by performing error corrections. Students design the various strategies, such as this wiggle routine. This is the control center of the operations, a video information processor from where a single controller can oversee numerous factory workstations. Each work cell is equipped with two side cameras, 
allowing the controller to see any problems that might arise. With the ability to view each workstation, the controller can inspect for accurate construction, as well as any physical problems that may arise with the parts feeders. It is then possible to intervene manually through remote control of the robot arms to set the continued construction on course. Placement and inspection of the parts are done in real time, making later quality control unnecessary. Once a house has been designed, it is possible to store this information in the VIP for future reference and recall. In other words, to build a video catalog from which a user may select a pre-programmed house for construction. In addition to this video catalog, the factory has an architectural modeling system, otherwise known as Sandbox, which allows a user to plan an arrangement of houses and cars. The system then displays the layout in a three-dimensional graphic mode. This urban layout system is simple enough for even a child to use. The Lincoln Log Factory of the Future is a model for industry, a model of intelligent design and manufacture for economic success in the years to come. The University of Lowell is building an environment for analyzing the content and use of mixed-media telecommunication sessions. The project leverages Lowell's previous collaborations with industrial partners in engineering and manufacturing. The value of industrial partnerships is it provides us with a platform for evaluating case studies based on real needs. In the first year of the project, researchers built a test bed for mixed media communications involving three different sites connected by optical fiber. The first site is the factory floor. At this site there is a malfunctioning machine that needs to be repaired. The problem is reported to an engineer in another part of the factory. To solve the problem the engineer needs to consult with a service representative from the company that designed the malfunctioning equipment. Together, they build a multimedia bug report. A live video image of the malfunctioning part is transmitted to the service representative. He compares the video image with a CAD drawing of the part and discovers the problem. He then communicates his findings to the engineer and prepares an engineering change order. Sometimes the solution to a problem cannot be seen until various media forms, CAD, video, audio, are brought together and looked at together in a form that before was not possible. It's important for us to emphasize that the technology that we have used to create these demonstrations is actual working software and hardware. The communications is live 
using uh, a video switch and fiber optic communications. The workstation software does allow uh, mixed media document transfer between workstations in a live fashion. Researchers at the three project locations are sharing their findings in the hope of improving our understanding of how mixed media telecommunication systems should be developed and implemented. To participate in an international exhibit on artificial intelligence called the Age of Intelligent Machines, the exhibit will tour nine leading science museums and then go on to Japan and Europe. The UHO project that will be entered in the exhibit was developed by the University's Center for Productivity Enhancement. <laughs> The Lincoln Log Factory, so named after the child's building block set, used here as an example, is quite possibly a prototype of the factory of the future, where human involvement is minimal. The impact of this on American manufacturing may be that we'll be able to save the jobs uh, for the United States uh, that have been going abroad. But clearly, uh, education is going to have to change because what we're seeing here is the low-paying assembly jobs are going to be replaced by uh, robotic engineering and there'll be far fewer jobs in this manufacturing sector so while the day that robot replaces man has been feared by many Krolak stresses the use of robotics in this fashion can create more jobs by creating more factories we're trying to bring manufacturing back to the united states uh, not drive it out um, there are going to be blue-collar jobs. They're going to be uh, of a different nature than that they had been before. They're going to require more skill, more technical training in the Votech uh, schools. The jobs will be more interesting. Uh, they're going to require people to be more creative. In the Japanese factories, the Japanese workers have much more control over their environment than we see in the United States. So, um, yes, things are going to change. I can't change that. Uh, and it's either manufacture here or in some third world country, and I'd rather see us manufacturing in the United States. The prototype factory, as it will be displayed in the Age of Intelligent Machines display, will work like this. A visitor will enter in the specifications of the house he or she wants built from a menu or in English text. That is, there is no program that ha that's designed for this specific house. It uses the English sentences to interpret what the a uh, young Lincoln Log engineer uh, wanted and begins to uh, create its own set of instructions. The computer produces a graphic rendition of the house and then the production order is sent on to the factory. Now artificial intelligence enters the picture here courtesy of a vision system by automatics of Bill Ricca. To uh, inspect each uh, log as it's coming in place, make sure that it's correctly placed and if it's not to actually repair the, uh, the mistake, much as we use our hand and eye coordination to build things if we were a three-year-old child. This is the third prototype the ULOL Center has built. When completely developed, it will have automatic parts feeders to replace the human hands used here. It goes on tour on January 15th to begin with a stop at the Museum of Science in Boston. The vision system consists of an Automatics AV5 vision computer, along with the Panasonic CCD camera, located five feet above the part's surface. We are using a 150-watt bulb to light the area. This helps to drown out stray light which may enter the system from the room. Before construction can begin, we must teach the system its new environment. That is, we calibrate the vision parameters so the parts can be recognized in a new environment where the lighting may be different from its previous environment. Each part has a number of stable positions. For instance, the hull can sit on its top, bottom, or side. The cabin and cabin extensions are also stable on their tops and sides. This screen prompts for the part number to load into the database. 
Each stable position is considered a part of the database. The part is placed on the surface below the camera in ten different locations, one at a time, and pictures are taken and statistics are calculated and stored in the parts database. These will later be used to recognize the parts. After that, it is time for the rudder shaft and tiller combination piece. This is a delicate operation. Because of the size of the gripper and the jig setup, this piece cannot be placed directly into the stern of the boat. To solve this problem, we temporarily place it on the top of the sail and then come back and grip it from above. In this manner, it can be inserted without any problem. The mast is the next part to be placed. This is done with an insertion similar to the bow chuck. Since the mast may lean to one side after it has been inserted, we bring the robot arm back and push the mast in again to make sure it is in the same position each time. 